through my Discord, I have contact to super experienced senior level developers, beginner junior level developers, and everything in between. Here are my five takes on what makes a great React developer. And also, I saved it for the end of the video, one spicy take on what I believe doesn't make a great React dev. First off, styling solution. And React is not really opinionated in how you write your styles. There are a gazillion approaches. Choose one that works well for you and get good at it. Style components, emotion, SCSS, regular CSS, Tailwind CSS. There are a billion ways. Choose one, get good at it. Second, using a component library. Trust me, it's super important. It saves you so much time. It doesn't matter which one you use. Material UI, Chakra UI, Daisy UI. It doesn't matter. Use one. It makes you save so much time. Because while I wrote all the code in my application myself might sound impressive, it's super unpractical. And choosing the right UI library for you also depends on what you chose in step number one. If you like Tailwind CSS as your styling approach, like me for example, then you might go very well with something like Headless UI, Mantine that plays well with Tailwind, or Daisy UI. Whereas if Emotion is your weapon of choice when it comes to CSS, you might be better off with something like Material UI as your UI library. Then, and I think one of the most important points, data fetching. Yes, you can use the regular fetch API. No, I do not recommend using the regular fetch API. There are better ways to do it. For example, Redux Toolkit Query, Tanstack Query or React Query, or use SWR from Vercel. What these do is essentially they do the data fetching as well, just like the regular fetch API, but they make loading states, error states, retries and caching and so on so much easier and more customizable. I would highly urge you to choose one and learn it. Again, doesn't really matter which one. My personal choice is Tanstack or React Query. It works super well. I've done a video on that. If you want more information, I'm going to link it. Choose one, get good at it, and you'll never want to switch back to something like the regular Fetch API. Number four, learning a meta framework or a bundler that you're using in your project. For the bundlers, there are also a million options, Rollup, Parcel, Webpack, and so on. And if you're in vanilla React and not a meta framework, it makes sense to kind of learn the very basics of what is happening under the hood. How are your files bundled? How does that help performance? Just the basics, no need to get into it too specifically. The path I much prefer over learning bundlers is learning a meta framework. At this point, it's officially recommended by React, for example, by Dan Abramov on Twitter, to learn a meta framework, jump right into there instead of plain React. The advantages you get are basically twofold. First off, better SEO, because you're shipping the entire code if you're server-side rendering. And then secondly, you have a smaller initial load because most of what is happening is being prepared on the server and only then shipped to the client. Remix, Next.js, Gatsby, even if you're into that, I don't know. Um, these main three frameworks of React make the developer experience much more enjoyable and bring a lot of advantages with them. Lastly, databases and authentication. I put them together because I mostly do them together. You could also choose a client-side approach like JSON Web Tokens for your authentication, in which case your database doesn't really matter anymore. Learn a database, SQL, no SQL, like MongoDB, Upstash Redis, if that's what you're into. It really depends on the use case which database is best. If you want, you can also choose a service that does all this for you. Firebase, if you want to have a really bad day. Superbase, if you want to have a better day. There are a lot of options you can use that handle the database and the authentication and often real-time features as well for you. Now, implementing these yourself is not rocket science and I actually prefer it because you're more flexible in how you achieve things, but using a backend as a service like Firebase, Pocketbase, Superbase, etc., can make a lot of sense if you're wanting to get a good app up and running very quickly. Okay, lastly, kind of testing. I don't test much, to be honest, but I think if I don't include this point, people are gonna be really mad. So Cypress, Jest, React testing library, if you want to test your applications, it's kind of important. I've had a pretty good experience not testing much at all, to be honest. Okay, I promised you a spicy take at the end of the video. Here it is. You do not need to learn the very fundamentals of JavaScript to be good in React or Next.js or Remix or any framework that you choose. It's the path I chose as well. I did not take the time to learn JavaScript at any point during my career. I just went straight into React. What is a map? I have no idea. How do you filter an array? 
even less of an idea. But you know what? It worked out super well. So many people think that you need to get the fundamentals very right. And yes, it is very important to understand the fundamentals. However, the way you learn is what I want to differentiate. I think you're gonna learn these basics as you use them. My personal opinion is it's not worth taking the time to learn the fundamentals, sitting down and like, I'm gonna learn JavaScript so I can use React in a week or two. I don't think that makes sense. Learn React, get into it, do something, build projects, and that's how you really learn. At least it has worked super well for me. Okay, those were my takes. I really hope you enjoyed. Let me know what you think. There are probably a lot of things that also make a great React developer, so share your experiences below. I'm super happy to listen to them, and then I'll see you in the next one. Have a good one, and bye-bye.